This revision wants to teach a first grader who's still putting notes to the tooth fairy under her pillow about following Gandhi's lead to a peaceful protest. A first grader. CRT is already rampant and baked into our curriculum, and we don't want to be good little global citizens where our border is considered a military zone. I don't know what grade that was added into, but why? It's a border and it's good. Teach that. Hey everybody, comedian Maz Jobrani here. What you just watched was a clip of a mom at a hearing complaining about the Texas State Board of Education's curriculum for social studies, which includes some lesson about Gandhi and peaceful protests to first graders. And she's upset about it because she says this is part of CRT, critical race theory, which is running rampant. And she's just taking a lot of mumbo jumbo she's heard and throwing it all together. Uh, because the truth is critical race theory is something that's taught at the graduate school level. And using Gandhi as an example for peace is just using a historically world leader to just say there's peaceful ways to resolve issues. It's as if she were at this meeting complaining about saying they're teaching trigonometry to my first grader by teaching her about triangles. You see, you gotta learn about triangles before you can understand the concept. Then later on, you'll learn about trigonometry. So therefore, teaching peace does not mean that they're teaching them critical race theory. These are two different things, but it gets worse because the lady then is complaining about borders and then we come to find out she doesn't know much herself. So let's watch that clip. I guess I wanna understand if, what, what of have, what have the history um, on how borders were created, do you know about? What did you learn when you were in school? I'm not an expert. I, I, don't, know, I don't appreciate your um, belittling. I didn't hear with a PhD. I didn't come up here as an educator or somebody on one of these work groups. I'm coming up here as a parent. But what is in the standards is understanding our indigenous roots and understanding how uh, indigenous communities have been impacted. And those sorts of pieces of our history are very important. And so, again, I ask, what do you remember about learning about indigenous histories? I don't remember very much about indigenous histories. Which is the point. You go to school to learn. America has one of the worst education uh, you know, in the world in terms of rankings. We're really low in the world. And God forbid you ask an American about other countries. We don't know nothing. I'm a stand-up comedian. I perform all over the world. I swear, whenever I ask anyone in my audience in America about another country, generally speaking, we don't know much. But the problem is we're part of a world. We can't just isolate ourselves and pretend that the rest of the world doesn't exist. We can't pretend Gandhi does not exist. We can't pretend indigenous people weren't here before we came and murdered them. You need to know your history. You see, the problem with people complaining about critical race theory is that it's just history. You can't just say, well, let's get the good stuff from history. Let's get the, uh, let's get the time that we uh, uh, you know, won the, 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 the gold medal in basketball in the Olympics. But let's not talk about all of the slavery or overthrowing governments in the Middle East or overthrowing, helping overthrow governments in South America or Latin America. Let's not talk about any of that stuff. Let's just talk about the good stuff. Let's not talk about slavery. Let's not talk about indigenous people. Let's just talk about the good stuff. It doesn't work that way because if we do it that way, we end up with moms like this lady. And it gets even crazier because in Florida, they're teaching about bias and there was an actual lesson and i'm going to tell you what it was right now bias bias can be created by inserting suggestive blank into statements the media is often biased and will add words that persuade you to think one way over another and it says read these two statements that were made by reporters after the 2020 election statement one president trump made claims that the 2020 election was stolen statement two President Trump made false claims that the 2020 election was stolen. The first sentence is just giving you information, while the second sentence leads you to believe he is wrong before you have all the facts. No! No! 
Bo diddly diddly no. We, you can't no. The reporter has gone and studied and done the research and can clearly say that President Trump made false claims that the 2020 election was stolen. How does he know? Because 60 courts said the 2020 election was not stolen. Republicans, the Trump Republicans, people that were on his team said the election was not stolen. We've proven the elections were not stolen. So the reporter can put the word false in there. Now, don't get me wrong. I know that media is biased. There's right-wing media, there's left-wing media. They use different words to get their points across. But there's certain things we need to agree on. And you can't be teaching sixth graders in this form that the election was stolen because it wasn't stolen. So Republicans are losing their minds trying to say we shouldn't teach about history, the, the bad parts of history. We shouldn't teach about that. We shouldn't teach about the fact that the Star Spangled Banner written by uh scott key whatever his name was was it was actually uh a a a a, he was actually a a pro-slavery guy and there was slavery and there was uh racist undertones in that oh say can you see that song is actually comes from a racist history and we should know that we should it's okay doesn't mean all white people are bad we should know that and it gets worse because Republicans in Wisconsin are now trying to ban certain terms. Watch this. Republicans in Wisconsin are proposing banning this insane, extensive list of terms and subjects from classrooms in their state. And I just want to read all the terms to you because uh, you're just going to see how l- ludicrous this is. It's in alphabetical order, but they are, they said fuck that. Um, and we're putting critical race theory at the top of it anyways, obviously. So here we go. Critical race theory, action, civics, social, emotional learning, diversity, equity, and inclusion, culturally responsive teaching, abolitionist teaching, affinity groups, anti-racism, anti-bias training, anti-blackness, anti-meritocracy, centering or decentering, collective guilt, colorism, conscious and unconscious bias, critical ethics studies, critical pedagogy, don't know if I pronounced that right. Critical self-awareness, which they should learn. And the list goes on and on and on. You see, here's what's happening. Republicans don't want an educated population. Because if you're an educated population, you read between the lines, you see the grift. You see that Donald Trump is the biggest grifter in the world. Pretending to be poor and getting people to donate money to him so that he can go and do whatever he wants to do. And yet pay $750 in taxes, bury his former wife at his golf course so it's protected if uh, his assets get taken away. I mean, the guy's the biggest grifter in the world. Republicans don't want any kind of regulation to force corporations to pay their fair share of taxes. They don't want people to get wealthier and move their way into the middle class. Why? Because the dumber you are, the easier it is to manipulate you, the less critical you'll be of them, the less critically you'll think of what they're doing. That's the problem. That's why they don't want education at a young level or at an older level. They're upset about the $10,000 to $20,000 loan forgiveness that Biden just uh, uh, implemented. They don't like colleges. Famously, there was a, an economist Uh, who was under Reagan, who said, we don't want to subsidize education at the college level because colleges used to be a lot cheaper. But they said, we don't want to make it cheaper because we don't want more and more people being educated. And if there's not enough work for them, then we end up with a proletariat that is out of work and will work towards overthrowing the government. Rather than saying, let's create jobs for everybody. They said, let's just keep everybody dumb. So that's what's going on. So if you are a Republican and you're hearing all this stuff about critical race theory and you're hearing about like, oh my God, gender studies and all this other, chill. No one's trying to manipulate your kids to think in some crazy way. They're trying to educate your kids to think critically and they're trying to keep you dumb. So don't be dumb. Read between the lines. Go find out why there's borders. Why are there borders? What's going on at the borders? How did the borders ever come about? Who was in this country before we were here? Doesn't mean that you were the one who killed the Native Americans, but it does mean we should know our history. So with that said, 
On behalf of Mahatma Gandhi, I just say namaste. Stay educated. Please, next time you're at one of my comedy shows, if I ask you who the prime minister of England is, have an answer ready. Even if you're wrong, even if you say Boris Johnson, I'd be like, well, he was, he's no longer. Let's, let's know about the world just a little bit, just a little bit. To quote, to quote Robert De Niro in uh, Goodfellas, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. I'm Maz Jobrani. Follow me at Maz Jobrani. I swear I'll be funny if you come to my shows. Ah, these people are crazy. Educate yourself. Bye.